it should be remembered that the Egyptians accomplished other feats in their golden age. They developed surgery, plotted the movements of their stars, and worked with advanced mathematics. What the ancients accomplished, they apparently did without benefit of the pulley or block and tackle. It is clear, however, that the Egyptians had developed the powers of their minds to a high degree. Science is only beginning to learn what those powers can mean. The simple and amazing fact is that the Egyptians consistently built on a colossal scale. If we had only their monuments and temples to judge them by, we would have to assume they were a race of giants. did the Sphinx guard. Was there something inside the pyramid? In the 9th century AD, an Arab prince named Mahmoud rode to the pyramids with no thought of their grandeur. It was treasure he was after. His men set to work with gunpowder and battering rams. When they had breached the outer defenses of the pyramid, they found only a labyrinth of passageways and chambers. They were empty. The secret had not yielded to force. The Great Pyramid is unique in the complexity of its interior. Slicing the pyramid from north to south, we get this view. Our scale is exaggerated for a better look at the design. The pyramid rests on a central mound of uncleared earth, perhaps left as a base for constructing the first few levels of blocks. The entrance is in the north face, 55 feet above the ground. A corridor extends 60 feet down into the pyramid, where it joins another corridor, 129 feet in length. This corridor leads by another passageway to the so-called Queen's Chamber and to a gallery 153 feet long and 28 feet high. Beyond this magnificent gallery is the King's Chamber, repository of one of mankind's most enduring mysteries. Today, visitors can see the chamber just as it was when it was opened a thousand years ago. It may indeed have been intended as the final resting place for Cheops. No body has been found, however, and the rough finish of the granite centerpiece may indicate that the builders changed their minds. But here, question piles upon question. Another puzzle is the existence of shafts extending from the King's Chamber and the Grand Gallery to the surface of the pyramid. They may have been designed simply for ventilation, or they may have worked to align the pyramid with some planet or star which could be sighted through the shaft at regular intervals during the Earth's movement through the heavens. Surviving records of the Pyramid Age indicate that the Egyptians had an advanced knowledge of astronomy. This could explain how the faces of the pyramid are so precisely aligned with the cardinal points of the compass. It does not explain why it was so important for the pyramids to be perfectly tuned to the stars. The architectural patterns established so long ago by the best minds of Egypt are still in use today. Although no one knows anything for sure about the origin or purpose of the true pyramid, Many believe they can tap its supposed powers. Belief in pyramid power has generated a multi-million dollar industry. Pyramid models are thought to be able to perform a variety of miracles, from enhancing sexual potency to mummifying meat and sharpening razor blades. Others see, in the dimensions of the Great Pyramid, a detailed forecast of humanity's future. The future never seemed to be in doubt for the ancients. Scholars have labored for years over the hauntingly beautiful carvings that decorate the great monuments of Egypt.
They tell us that the most important qualities of life were harmony with the gods and the permanence of the established order. In the panorama of Egypt's 27 centuries of unparalleled accomplishments, there was not the slightest indication that anyone thought it would ever come to an end. Yet it did. But why? Perhaps a clue lies in the belief that even the lifetime of the humblest peasant could extend beyond the grave. There was one condition. The body must remain preserved and undisturbed. The rites of death were performed in elaborate temples, way stations for the immortal soul. Preparation of the body took 70 days. Internal organs were removed and the shell of the body treated with salts and exotic oils. Enough mummies have been found to testify to the skill of the ancient technicians of immortality. Is it possible the Egyptians dreamed of a day when techniques more advanced than their own could restore vigor to dry flesh? Scientists are using modern techniques on the mummies, not to restore them to life, of course, but to learn something of the remarkable people who built pyramids and dreamed of life everlasting. X-rays reveal that the Egyptian of the period was small in stature and likely to fall victim to the same diseases which afflict mankind today. If the deceased was of noble blood, his funeral would include a symbolic boat. The boat would be borne by priests in the guise of the deities who would ensure that the spirit was ready for a voyage to the kingdom of the dead. There would be a preliminary voyage across the River Nile to the West Bank, where cities of the dead were traditionally built. After the Pyramid Age, the greatest of these was the Valley of the Kings in Upper Egypt. It was in the Valley of the Kings that Howard Carter discovered the undisturbed tomb of Tutankhamun. The discovery remains the richest in the history of Egyptian archaeology.